Everybody, this is Dr. Daniel Choi from North Texas Dental Surgery, Wisdom Teeth, and Denture Implant Center. Wanted to answer a important question a patient had for me on YouTube today. Um, thought that one of their implants was failing, and hey, is you know how could I even tell I have these symptoms? Um, you know what could I potentially do about it? So I wanted to create a video that would basically help patients understand how we would diagnose if your implant, long story short, is having any issues. Is it having issues to the point where the implant maybe has to be removed or is it a treatable option, right? Um, also, I had another patient come in this morning. She was referred from another office patient, had um, an implant placed about five years ago um, <clears throat> up in New Hampshire, and she's been having some pain on it. And we took a 3D scan and was able to go over, um, you know, what we thought was happening with the implant and kind of some treatment options. So. Let's talk about this patient here. Um, let's zoom in right here. So we have this patient who had, um, again, several, as you see, three dental implants placed. Um, this one she said was about five years ago and right off the bat, um, you know, I asked her why um, she thought that she might have an issue with it. And she said that she had some aching constantly over in this lower left area. Um, we took a panoramic x-ray and a 3D scan, and right off the bat, you could see some bone loss going around this dental implant. How, the, how we could tell is that basically we're looking for our areas of decalcification. Basically, um, when bone is uh, nice and dense, you could see the way it looks. But, one is, but when bone is being lost um, due to an infection or something like that, or it's just missing um, from bone loss over the years, it shows up as darkness. Okay, And so whenever we're looking at a tooth or a dental implant, we would be looking for these areas of darkness. Um, and what we also can confirm is on this 3D scan when we're looking at this in profile, you can see that basically that we are experiencing some bone loss around this dental implant. Now, how would we basically decide whether a tooth is savable or not? Well, the good news is that this implant has lost some bone, but it hasn't lost um, too much bone. Um, and the good news is that with this happening in the lower jaw, lower jaw tends to be more dense. And so that's actually great news for the patient because um, what we want to do is we want to be able to save this implant for her. Now, is she, you know, to kind of help patients to understand at what point, you know, maybe if the implant had gone too far with an infection that you may, might, worst case scenario, you might lose the implant. But um, we always basically do an assessment with a patient based on x-rays. And also we do some probing around, you know, when you go to the dentist, they probe and measure your gums because that's the other diagnostic factor that we want to use whenever we're kind of assessing, all right, what's going on here? How bad is it? So taking a step back, how did this even happen in the first place? Well, the most common reasons for um, infection around a dental implant um, that we typically see, um, number one, we call it periimplantitis, meaning inflammation around a dental implant. So that inflammation can happen due to infection, which can happen as a result of bacterial infection. Um, bacteria has gotten onto the threads of the implants and the titanium pores of the dental implants. Um, also, that can be caused by cement from when we put the crown on top of it. Uh, sometimes it's a rookie mistake. Sometimes when uh, doctors will put that that crown on there, they let too much cement leak down underneath, which can then cause bacteria to adhere to the area and in the long run cause an infection and therefore bone loss. So that would be a common reason for patients getting infections around dental implants. Other issues would include uh, maybe there's just too much trauma occurring on a dental implant. Like if we got like a crazy, crazy grinder or clencher uh, grinding on their tooth like that, the implant um, uh, handles vertical loads very well, but horizontal loads it doesn't deal with as well. So that might have been another factor. Um, not the factor in this case, but if a person is placing too large of a dental implant and there's not enough thickness of bone around the dental implant, the bone can basically start dying off and then you start losing gum and then basically bacteria can start adhering to the pores, the tiny microscopic pores of the dental implant which would then allow toxins to be released and therefore cause even more bone and gum loss and then potentially losing the implant. So those are the typical main reasons as to why we have dental implant issues. But again, how do we get back to, um, all right, what can we do about it, right? So the things that I typically do is I look and see how much bone loss do we have, right? So, oh yeah, and actually let me take another step back. Let's say, all right, how early, like what phase are we in this dental implant treatment? If this patient just had their dental implant placed and it's in the first few months of osseointegration, integration, we're waiting for it to heal um, fully so that we can start putting the abutment crown on there. I mean, if it's already losing bone, then I'm gonna say, you know what, what are we doing here? We shouldn't try to treat that with a laser, do bone grafting, all that stuff. 
I am very, you know, very anal about my things. So like, I want to basically build my house on a solid foundation. I don't want to compromise foundation right off the get go. So if I do notice any issues on the x-rays right off the bat, I say, let's just start over. We just take it out and then we're going to go ahead and place another implant. Um, in regards to um, if this happened later on off after osteo integration, you have a crown on there, then what you want to be able to do is assess, all right, are we catching this early where we've lost only a little bit of bone? Great. We can go ahead and treat that implant. Um, if we are finding it very late in the process and we would be able to say, see that by too much bone loss, um, patients having exudate, you know, like pus coming from the area, um, just, you know, just... Basically, I would say the bone loss is the biggest determiner of like whether we can get success in treating that implant. Then we don't want to beat a dead horse and basically try to treat that implant because it's going to be a waste of time and money. Okay, so I tell patients, you know, you want to go to someone experienced. Typically, the pa the people who are best at treating stuff like this are going to be your periodontist um, treating periimplantitis. Now. I do want to tell you, and I'll create another video talking about treating periimplantitis because that's a whole nother half hour conversation. But um, periimplant uh, periimplantitis treatment is basically something, you know, because more dental implants are being treated over the last like you know few decades, we are starting to see more cases of periimplantitis pop up too. The question is, how do you manage its complications? So um, again, I'll create another video about that. But hopefully, um, this video is helpful um, to just kind of sum it up in regards to like, hey, this is what we typically see with infections of dental implants and how we would go ahead and treat some of these issues um, and kind of also make an assessment as to how, um, you know, whether we would decide whether to save it or maybe there's a, another issue. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll be able to answer those questions. And if you thought this information was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you.